So, She-Hulk has had a lot of ups and a lot of downs, but I'll be very frank with you. It was all worth it for the line, Sometimes I Smash Matt Murdock. Hello, Interwebs. I'm here to review the season finale of She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Whose show is this? And I have to say, this was an absolute treat. I did not expect <laughs> this show to go as far with the meta as it did in this episode. Like, when it hit that midpoint where she literally goes to Disney+, Plus, breaks out, and goes into Marvel Assembled, I was like... Wow, damn, they definitely saved the best meta bit for last, because that was truly awesome. Like, I, I, I really just can't say more than that. Like, this was just so much fun and so exuberant to end the show with their biggest meta break of all time. And in a lot of ways, lampshading a lot of the problems that Marvel has had, not only with just the MCU in general with some of its Marvel movies, but even some of the Disney Plus shows at this point. Uh, even going so far as to like directly point out some problems of, that people were calling out of this show the past few weeks, like the the fact that um, uh, that they haven't actually shown Jen's transformations on screen to save money for the VXF budget. They they like actually made a joke about that, and that was like a constant criticism I heard like just a few weeks ago from people. So I'm like, wow, they were very self aware uh, here. Like I'm honestly shocked with uh, some of the jokes that they were allowed to get away with uh, in this finale, and I really enjoyed it. But then also on top of that, while there was a lot of like lamp shading and stuff, and there was one joke that didn't. Uh, particularly land super well getting, given the context, but we'll um, we'll get there in just a second. What I do appreciate is that all that meta humor was done in service of actually explicitly stating to the audience uh, in the she most She-Hulk way possible that uh, the thing that I've had the biggest criticism with a lot of Disney Plus shows for in that their stakes are always at a 10. Like shows like Moon Knight and Miss Marvel were shows that I was really starting to feel the like the fact that Marvel was really trying to just make movies with its TV shows, and I didn't, and I was kind of was wearing thin for me, and was just stretching things out. And I liked that this show really took that on and said, "This is a show that's just going to be about low stakes. It's just going to be about Jen figuring out her own life." And I liked that that was what this show was making a statement about. And I think that, uh, before I get into some of the specifics of the finale, that is what I have most appreciated about the show. I have made no bones about the fact that I thought that She-Hulk had a decent start, a really rough uh, middle, and then has been getting progressively better in these last few episodes of the season. But I think the reason that I liked it more and more as these last few weeks have gone on is that it has become more episodic and more focused on Jen. I've had criticisms here and there, like it, uh, just hyper-focusing just on Jen's dating life uh, to the exclusion of sometimes the legal stuff that I at times found more interesting. But I, I have liked that episodic just getting to hang out in the MCU feel that I kind of won from other Marvel shows that I didn't get because they were still trying to be these grand big movie projects just made into episodic format. And while that's worked in some cases like Loki, I think it hasn't in some cases like Miss Marvel or Moon Knight. Not to take away from those shows, I think they have good elements of them, but they feel stretched out because they're trying to be a movie in episodic format. So I like that that was sort of just taken head on, and that was something that only She-Hulk, maybe maybe uh, Deadpool could have done it too, but especially She-Hulk, I think, uh, as this character, uh, to can break the fourth wall in this way, can do, and she did it phenomenally. Uh, so let's jump into it and I'll talk about some of the specifics. I loved the opening of this episode being a just parody of the old Lou Ferrigno Hulk show. I didn't watch that show regularly when I was a kid because it was a little bit before my time, but I did watch some episodes like the, uh, the old Daredevil or Thor crossover movies. I loved those. I had a DVD of them as a kid. I think I might even still have it. So it was just cool to see that little call out there. Uh, but then we get into the ramifications from last week, which is Intelligentsia posted her uh, revenge porn online and she got angry as well she was deserved to be that was the sentence as well she deserved to get angry at that but everyone just hyper focused on her reaction to it to the point that she was the one that ended up in prison and no one seemed to be caring or investigating intelligentsia in that rings sadly true like yes she did do property damage yes she should be held accountable for that to a degree but 
every the entire discourse was just about how she took it badly how she was the person who took to too far and no discussion of the men who did that to her and so i and that is upsettingly true it's a lot of people just put upon uh, especially women women's reaction women always have to we have to constantly like like take the high road always have to be perfect in our reaction and if we react badly or imperfectly to a situation that is absolutely horrific and that no one should be expected to react perfectly to we're the ones that get judged for i mean i've seen it in big levels with big name celebrities and i've seen it with small people like youtubers you know and that's not to necessarily forgive if someone really fucks up during the situations but there's no grace given um and the entire discussion is on on that and so i thought that that was a, a really thoughtful look at that and then I liked how the show kind of started spiraling and I thought it was really interesting how the show managed to feel like it was actually paying off storylines but then poking at fun at the fact that it was doing it in kind of a very stereotypical Marvel way because we got everything coming together turns out that Todd Phelps the guy that we all kind of figured was going to be the uh the person running intelligence yet like I wasn't particularly surprised I uh, was running it we have our friends sort of uh posting we have pug it's sort of wrapping pug and um uh the other I forget a name off the top of my head but uh Jen's other friend uh sort of figuring out this out and going to this meeting and having like this anti-fan thing and a lot of the things that they were saying at this meeting are things that you hear all the time about MCU shows especially when a woman headlines it like oh they didn't hire the best person for the job they just were trying to get forced diversity uh in there she didn't earn her power she just got it from the Hulk like it's just a man had to give it to her sort of thing so it's just a lot of those like dumb anti-SJW uh anti-fan folks who constantly peddle those like arguments that are just not really they're just there to hate on a thing and not actually giving any nuanced critique. And so I like the show just literally just stating it. And, and I liked it being hyper aware and saying, yeah, screw these guys. They're assholes. And, uh, and, and Pug just constantly having to be like, yeah, I'm angry too. I also really loved seeing, um, well, actually, no, loved is the wrong word. I was very nervous when there was this sort of like hinting towards Emil was part of Intelligentsia. Like he wasn't at his house when Jen showed up there. And I'm like, oh no, is he going to be the lead? And I was, I was actually kind of shocked at how upset I was going to be because I'm like, I actually really liked Emil's turn to be the good guy in two episodes ago where he was sort of running that um, group therapy. You know, if they had made him the bad guy, it would have tainted that episode for me because it was really nice and sweet to see everyone actually care about Jen in that group therapy episode. And so if it had turned out that he was earnestly running this thing, that would have felt like a deep betrayal and, and kind of dark considering he was sort of manipulating her through therapy and, and manipulating her genuine emotions. So I was so thankful that that was not the case, that it was just he's doing a speaking ceremony. Um, so they, they hired him just to do a speaking ceremony. He didn't really know what it was. I very much appreciated that. Like, yes, he is still uh, doing dumb things. He's still sort of changing into the abomination when he shouldn't be doing that. So he does have to be held accountable for it. But he is not an asshole. I, I actually really just liked that shift in his character and he did not turn out to be the ultimate bad guy of the show. Like that was great. Then we have uh, Jen showing up at the meeting and then ever, everything just gets sort of heightening. Uh, he injects the Todd Phelps injects himself with the, uh, the super serum and everything just sort of comes in. Like Bruce comes in, it gets all intense. She's like, wait, why, why is this going this way? And then as I said before, she breaks out and has that wonderful meta moment where she goes to literally Marvel studios and goes to the writer's room. Um, this was great. I was like, like literally just giggling with joy you know it's a bit on the nose and a bit like direct to the audience but that's the point of doing meta and that's the point of she hulk and i love that this is something that only this medium could have done um one of my friends vera wild she's been reviewing she hulk uh, the show as well and I've been watching her reviews and she's read the comics and I've not read the comics that She-Hulk is based on but one point one thing that she pointed out was a lot of those uh you know fourth wall breaking moments in the comics were specific to that medium here the jokes that they've been doing these past few episodes have been more and more specific to tv like we had the previously on joke a few episodes ago and then here we literally get her breaking into the streaming service uh so that was that was great uh and also I'm sure Disney Plus was very happy to promote their Marvel Assembled show 
Uh, but I love the writers literally going like, you cannot see Kevin. Uh, I will literally uh, fight you uh, to save, to protect Kevin. Sort of that nerd protection feeling that we all feel about Kevin Feige, our God. Um, you know, I have, I have, you know, Kevin Feige is not a perfect person. Um, but, you know, he did bring the MCU uh, for better, for worse. So there is a sense of nerd protection of the man. Um, anywho, I was like, are they really going to have Kevin Feige appear in the show? Uh, I was, I was kind of excited to see what his acting chops were going to be like, but no, it's sort of like this AI brain controlling everything, um, which, you know, it's a little lame of a joke considering we've seen that like algorithm running these studios sort of thing being done before Space Jam, uh, the recent Space Jam did it recently. I think a few other things did that too. So like that's, it's kind of the go-to meta thing. So I wasn't particularly enthused about that, but what I did like is Jen calling out all the MCU's problems, like being like, oh, you're going to have a similar fighting a similar villain fighting the hero again you're going to have the super soldier serum again you're going to have the stake speed at 100 again um i thought that that uh was great to point out it does it does mean they are lampshading it a bit which uh you know says to me like marvel if you're not going to change doing this in the future don't just make jokes about it. so hopefully this is a sign that Phase five and beyond will actually be shifting up the Marvel formula a little bit because um, it has been getting a little stale in phase four, if, uh, for all being honest. So hopefully them saying this is that shift. Otherwise, it's just lampshading it and then still doing it. So we'll see what that means going forward. Not necessarily a problem of the show. Uh, these writers can't control the entire MCU, uh, but we'll we'll sort of see how that goes. Uh, but I did also like, like I said, her pointing out the fact that she wants smaller stakes. The one joke that I did not think landed very well was the joke about, oh, the VFX teams have moved on to something else. Uh, you know, try and save budget or shift because uh, we you, you we don't want to spend this money on you looking like She-Hulk here. Um, that was... Uh, <laughs> Kind of didn't age well considering all the discussion of how we've seen uh, VFX teams be under crunch specifically for She-Hulk. So this sort of uh, like, haha, the VFX team doesn't want to spend the money. They've moved on to a different project. I'm like, oof, yeah, our discussion about VFX artists and crunch didn't didn't make that age uh, super well, sort of like being flippant about that. Um, so that was the one joke that I'm like, eh, not, not great. Um, but I did like that they made fun of the fact that she couldn't shift uh, while she was in Hulk to because that was a lot of work for the VFX team. So, um, you know, it aged it aged as well as I guess it could possibly have uh, as a joke. Um, but, yeah, no, I like that the episode then goes back to our uh, main cast and it ends on just kind of a low-stakes thing. Like, she manages to stop Intelligentsia um, with just legal means. Uh, you know, it, it's just about her finding herself. It's not about this big battle or whatever. It's, again, this kind of having its cake and eating it, too, as a show. It's like they got to show a big battle. They got to have the big ridiculous thing that Marvel always does, but then sort of shifted it back. And, again, hopefully it's not just lampshading it and doing it again, but hopefully this marks a shift for both the series and the MCU. We'll see. But uh, I also liked that Daredevil gets to kind of be her boyfriend now, which I hope is just a thing that sticks around. We'll see. Uh, I would love to see Jen showing up in the Daredevil show. Uh, that would be fantastic, to my mind, actually. Uh, so that was all great. Bruce showing up, and now he has a son. I'm curious if that's just a one-off joke that they did or if they're going to uh, actually have that come up in whatever project Bruce shows up in next. I'm earnestly curious about that one uh so yeah i think that that's everything that i basically had to say uh the only other thing that i'll say is just sort of wrap out thoughts on she hulk is in general i kind of said most of my thoughts at the top i think what worked about this show was when it was just a weekly drama and getting to hang out in the mcu without the stakes being so high and i think i hope that if this is the uh dumont that this show is going to go out on that that is their uh like hope for the series that next season if they get one they're actually able to continue that that they're actually able to have uh this just be a weekly legal comedy and actually f emphasize the legal part of it a little bit more um instead of uh having to have these like long ongoing storylines that have been sort of backgrounded this season so yeah on the whole i was deeply impressed i mean she hulk you know i'm not going to sit here and say this is a 10 out of 10 show I, I adored it to death and that it was my favorite mcu project uh of phase four or ever or anything like that um i still think that's loki to my mind is both my favorite phase four and disney plus show at the moment uh that, that marvel has done um but i still uh found a lot refreshing about this i thought this was a show they got better week to week um which is not something i've i don't think i've said about a single uh mcu project except maybe loki uh, might be the only one that i think got better as it went along um so yeah i i 
I mean, WandaVision was great too, but also I think it got worse as it went along. So yeah, I think I, I really like She-Hulk. I think it was fantastic. Uh, you know, fa well, fantastic is a strong word, but I think it was really strong. I, I really enjoyed this series and it has me excited for more, which is what more than I can say about some of the other uh, MCU projects and shows that have come out. Um, yeah. I'll end there. I'm kind of rambling. Uh, sorry if I've been ummy a little bit more than ten more tonight because I've been kind of tired all day today. I finished a big project for my main channel just the other day, and I'm kind of crashing uh, the entirety of today. So I'll end there. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I hope you all, my friends, hope you all, my friend. I'm tired. Live long and prosper, everybody. Mwah. <laughs>